welcome to the News X Sunday Guardian Roundtable. Well, elections have finally begun and the narratives are more or less in place. But what is interesting about this election is the lack of an obvious wave, you know, like we saw in 2019. Here, there seems to be mixed feelings, probably because the temple has been built. The uh, government also is not coming up with one defining narrative, apart from, of course, Modi ki guarantee. On the other side, the opposition hasn't got its act together. That is something we're going to be taking a look at. So while there is no defining narrative, there is the Congress has come up with a very comprehensive manifesto this time. There are states where the BJP has peaked in the north, where the Congress uh, and the opposition is sensing some kind of a you know, chink to at least break the um, uh, stronghold and not uh, deliver that char sauce par is bari Modi Sarkar char sauce par. That number uh, is that achievable? Can the opposition bring down the number of the Modi government? or you know uh, even try and destabilize the Modi government that's something we are going to be discussing on the panel today joining me is Sandeep Ghosh a political columnist and um, uh, commentator uh, we have uh, Rashid Kidwai he's a political journalist author and commentator Taisim Punawala congress sympathizer and a uh, very articulate lawyer and Ashutosh she is uh, the founding editor of satyahindi.com uh, Sandeep, uh, you know, I've been reading a lot about your, you know, you've been also writing a lot on uh, Twitter and on your columns. Uh, how do you see the opposition faring in this election? See, opposition, uh, uh, my reading is uh, the regional parties have figured out that, that each one of them have to fend for themselves, each one to its own. And because they have far greater things at stake, you know, Rahul Gandhi can think of getting re relaunched for the next 50 years, but uh, opposition parties, they have got their leaders up for their sell-by date, uh, especially the front-rung leaders. So they will have to ensure survival of their parties as well as their, uh, uh, you know, successors. So they have, I think, uh, decided to cut the losses um, on this India front alliance and each one are trying to fend uh, for themselves. And in that, I think the regional ones like DMK uh, is doing well. Uh, TMC would be doing well, contrary to a lot of uh, what people say. Uh, where you're having a little bit of a hot spot is Maharashtra. But even there, I think there is a fair amount of anti-incumbency uh, against the, you know, the new formed coalition. So they have a chance, but they're, uh, I don't know how far Congress will play the spoiled sport. So all they are, uh, I think, opposition to that. <laughs> I think I, uh, one doesn't know exactly how it is in UP. Um, uh, but okay. there also it seems that Akhilesh is beginning to uh, get his act together. Where BJP, I think, is faltering a bit uh, in their even their stronghold states, I think they're having some issues of um, seat allocation and uh, adjustments. So uh, one here, say even a state like Rajasthan, uh, mm. at least five seats are, um, are, are in your party. So those would be, I think, crucial. But uh, uh, so far, we have only done the first round, a long way to go to uh, sense, you know, if I, I recall uh, the UP elections when the first round was over, people had a certain reading and uh, as mm -hmm. things went on, um, uh, you never know, there's a long, long uh, road ahead. In fact, Ashutu, my feedback, even he, Sandeep mentions the first uh, round from Western UP, for instance, the India Alliance seems to be, you know, um, uh, getting very good, better feedback than the BJP and its allies. Uh, Rajasthan, uh, the, the Alliance uh, Congress is probably going to get a few seats. So in the north where they had peaked, there seem to be states where the BJP is, uh, you know, losing hold. See, if uh, I had been editor of a major newspaper today, what would have been my headline? Modi fatigue, that's the one, two word, nothing else. There is a definite Modi fatigue, <clears throat> especially in the North India, if you look at. Uh, there is a dissatisfaction with the, with the government performance. And this has reflected in the many surveys. But the latest is CSDS survey. You look at the three parameters, which, is, which could have been a great undercurrent, like uh, unemployment, uh, price rise, and also the, the corruption. And all three, which government to, to be responsible, number one, is the BJP government, that is the Modi government. Has uh, unemployment increased in the last five years? Definitely, yes. Has uh, corruption increased in the last five? Definitely, yes. Has the price rise increased? Definitely, yes. These are the three parameters. And what hmm. about uh, Ram Mandir? Is it an issue? Eight eight percent saying not an issue. Uh, only issue. Two percent hmm. are saying Hindutva is an issue. 
So what is what does it indicate? So we can discuss the opposition because we keep discussing have discussed the opposition for the la, uh, the last ten years. So there is a definite Modi fatigue. Point number one. Point number two, Hindutva is not working. Outside the Hindutva fold, the, the fringe elements, the, the sorry, not the fringe, uh, uh, the, the, the voters, basically floating voters, they are not <clears throat> enthused by Hindutva anymore. If BJP wanted Ram Mandir Nirmar to be the, uh, to the master stroke this time, which many said it, that now the election <laughs> is almost done. I have read many uh, many reports and I have read reports from the very prestigious who are objective reports and they mm -hmm. are saying it's not working and supported by the data. Point number three, the Modi mechanization is also not working. You 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 throw Vasunda Rajesh Sindhya in the dustbin, you, you throw Suraj part, uh, Suraj uh, in the dustbin and, you, and if you want to uh, reap fruits for this, that is not working and that definitely it has not worked in Rajasthan. And fourthly, the smart politics taking Nitish Kumar from India Gadbandhan to BJP, uh, Sindhe and uh, Ajit Pawar is also not working. I'm not saying it has it is not working, but it is the, the if they thought that this is going to get them humongous number of seats, it's not yes. also not working. So what is happening now? The issue is simple. That in 2014, if there was a, uh, I, I always say that two elections, 2014, 2019 have been abnormal election. Hmm. 2024 is the normal election. This I said on your channel six months back. Because uh, in 2014, there was an anger against the Congress party. Anger, deep anger, disgust, yeah. anger. In 2019, there was a Bala court. This is 2024. There is a definitely, uh, opposition has a chance, chance in the sense Mm. Uh, they can inflict serious wounds to the Modi and the BJP. And yes. uh, it, is, it is showing uh, in the anger of Rajput in uh, uh, in Western UP. It is showing in the anger of Jats in the in the West in, in the in the in Rajasthan. Yes. Uh, I can cite at least 10 constituencies in, in Rajasthan with the BJP is having very, very tough time. Okay. The only factor is yeah. that the, the difference between the BJP's vote share in 2019 and 2014. And uh, uh, India and the, and the opponents is very huge. Hmm. Whether they are in a position to bridge that gap. Now, th yes. that's where the, the result of the of this election lies. Okay. So, see, we've, uh, we've, what Modi government is doing wrong, Ashutosh has explained. But what is the opposition doing right? Where you feel a little confident that you know they can make a difference. And how much of a difference? So thank you for having me on the show. Uh, to your specific question, what is the opposition doing right? Not much. This election, Ashutosh is right, is a normal election. It's an election about the people of India versus the current BJP government. Make no mistake about it. I've just come to Delhi from uh, Maharashtra, Western Maharashtra, where I was touring and I was campaigning for the people. And you know, I'm anti-BJP. And I would meet core BJP supporters. I'm talking about doctors, gynecologists, uh, cardiologists, core BJP supporters, voted generations. And they would say, the reason we really trusted the BJP is we didn't want an Ajit Pawar. We didn't want a Chakan Bhutra. These are people telling me, right? So they said, this time we we'll go out and teach these people a lesson. When I would go on the ground to campaign, this is on the ground, so these were at dinners, the core karyakarta of the RSS or the BJP would say, all this time we spent building a party in Maharashtra, we never assumed we would get to this government. Now that we have power, look at how we are treated. Anyone who comes from the Congress has been giving importance. So why did we spoil our equations? Why did we spoil? So there is anger, which I think the BJP leadership did not take. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be a turning factor. This is one factor. When I come to Delhi and I'm meeting a lot of IAS, IPS officers in my meditation classes we, or et cetera that we're doing and we're trying to figure out, Everyone's petrified. These are senior IS officers, senior army officers. So, you know, when we're sitting, we're meditating, and then they go like, these guys will change the constitution. They're scared. And I'm not talking about common man, middle class. I'm talking about senior army officers, senior IS officers. Who think, Look, this is not right. The way they're bullying. And one statement of the prime minister got a lot of IS rattled, IRS rattled. He goes to RBI, he says, I'm giving you 100 days things because I'm going to make changes. He's already done demonetization one. He's bullying the RSS again. And RSS is autonomous. People are scared. People now think, this is my reading, that if, and this is the word on the street. Now, I'm being colloquial. I'm not being disrespectful to anyone. The word on the street is, if these two come back, God knows what will happen. 
That's the word on the street. They're talking about the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Home Minister. That fear is driving people out to vote. Yesterday in Chennai, after as soon as the sun went out, there was a surge in voting. People want to make sure that they come and they don't vote the BGP. And the one sentence that everyone that I'm talking to is common thread that is this. Look, we'll figure out who later. Right now, the house is on fire. Get out of the house. Hum ghar ja kar hotel mein rehege, lodge mein rehege, inn mein rehege, kisi aur ke ghar mein rehege, wo baad mein tay karege. Pehle ghar ke bahar niklo, ghar jaj pahe. So okay. people want to abandon this. It's very scary right now. And I think what happened yesterday in the 102, in the 102 seats has got the BJP rattled. I have never seen the BJP this rattled. Therefore, the Hindu Muslim started yesterday. And you see yeah. now the Hindu Muslim will start. But that's the thing, you know, um, uh, two things, Rashid. One is the Prime Minister's own interview where he says that I will not change the constitution. So what the SEM is saying, there is a real fear that when they come back, they will tamper with the constitution, which is why he's making this statement straight out in front. And secondly, if the first round of voting goes against them, then that also mobilizes the BJP cadres to come out and vote in bigger numbers. Their organizational strength is very big, uh, Rashid. Uh, yes, Priya. So I think 2024 election is Mr. Modi's election. Entire politics, uh, candidates, uh, issues, whatever you say, it's for or against uh, Mr. Modi. He's there third time. We need to be very, you know, kind of clinical in our assessment. Is there a kind of anger against Mr. Modi? I'm not so sure. The groups we are talking about, Rajput, Jats, uh, several other groups. We have, uh, Priya, me and you and all other panelists have seen. There is, every time there is election, state assembly election or parliamentary election, you see these kind of things come in, uh, farmers' agitation, uh, Maratha agitation. End of the day, you know, people tend to vote uh, for the ruling party. At least that has been a trend. And this is something that should, you know, cause a lot of anxiety and opposition rank. Because voting behavior, unfortunately, in India is a very emotional decision. It's not so much a logical, rational decision, but it should be logically. What is mm. BGP doing, Priya? Another smart thing I'm seeing, they have gone about, you know, a major shopping spree. If there is a Modi fatigue or whatever, you look at Madhya Pradesh, thousands, thousands of political workers have switched loyalty for no reason, no you know, possible reason. There's so many, you know, changes that uh, my friend was talking about, about, uh, you know, uh, Shinde and Ajit Pawar and several of them, uh, and Nitish Kumar. It's not that BGP had a great love for them. I think they want to compensate for that. So if there is, you know, 40% plus and they want to get at least 4 5% extra cushion by getting this kind of defections. So the BGP's preparedness is very high. And of course, the key factor that comes in uh, that about the phase, uh, the opposition lacks a phase to say that the house is on fire and we'll come back and regroup. It sounds very good. Again, a television studio and all, Not people are not so much convinced. So my point of interest, Priya, in this election is whether Mr. Modi is going to get a resounding mandate or he's just going to barely scrap through, you know, 250, 260, 270 seats. And that would, of course, lead to a very intense kind of uh, politics in 2029. In fact, yeah, I agree with the numbers that Rashid is, uh, yeah, Tessin, quickly, we'll take a break. Rashid is, uh, Rashid is a typical analyst who only take one sentence out of context and then say it and say, oh, it sounds very fancy in, in studios. Doesn't say. The whole parameter of your question to me was, to which I said, is what is the opposition doing right? To which I said nothing. I actually admitted it. Of course, in an ideal world, they should have had a prime minister cabinet. I've been yelling on your show. They should have had a shadow cabinet. Yet they didn't do it as okay. I admit to it. Having said that, there is a large section that is very, very petrified. The prime minister is a very smart man. He's mm -hmm. not going to make a statement twice that I will not change the constitution if this fear is not palpable. And I'm telling you this fear is palpable in officers. Okay. So he's making this statement. He's a political guy. So I'm going to come and take only one statement. So studio may just sound come, right? Rashid, you're being a typical political analyst. Don't no, be no, a politician. No, 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 but he's saying, yeah. thing is a very... Don't be a politician, but, Rashid. You're my friend. Yeah, just one second. Priya, this, this whole plank of Samvidhan Bachao is very, you know, utopian kind of thing. People, common I mean, managers, you know, people are not able to relate to this. What is what is constitution? Because there is police, there are courts, there are media, there are all kind of institutions are there. So while I see the point, but again, it is very difficult to sell that, you know, that Samvidhan is in danger. I mean, 
I need a I'm going to take no I'm again, I'm not saying no no what again this what again what let me just take a quick break Ashutosh also wants to come in and I want to get Sandeep back a quick break we're going to keep the discussion going so stay with us hello and welcome back to the news x sunday garden round table well we were discussing what the opposition is doing right or wrong and what the government is doing wrong or right so this the discussion got very heated up uh, can i bring Sandeep in or is this just one line just one line just one line only one line only one line Again, I agree with Rashid. Again, I agree with Rashid. If the opposition went about saying, Nini, this is only about Samvidhan Bachao, they would get wiped out. It is the common man who's got it in him that, listen, something is going wrong. So it is something coming from the ground. If it were the opposition, the prime minister would not have yet. Again, Sandeep, don't be a politician. Uh, sorry, again, Rashid, don't be a politician. Be a political analyst. <laughs> Ashutosh, quickly, you want to come in, then I'll get Sandeep. No, no, get, get Sandeep, then I'll, I'll speak. Okay. Sandeep, so, um, uh, you know, you've got the sense of the debate so far. What is your reaction if, to it? If I hear what Tehseen is saying, and, I, you know, looking at now, both our friends, Tehseen and Rashid, uh, what Tehseen is saying, he, he's talking about a 1977 repeat when everybody was anti-Indira Gandhi and thought that, you know, he's saying that kind of a silent surge is happening. There is a silent voter who's... Uh, extremely worried, extremely uh, af um, uh, afraid, and he's wanting change. Uh, now, uh, that seems to be a very uh, recent realization. Uh, if uh, Whether it's analysts or people on the ground haven't sensed so far, uh, and even people within the bureaucracy, etc., that that kind of, uh, the Nasbandi kind of fear of 76, 77 is happening in the ground as well. One would have sensed then whosoever has traveled through UP and I was a kid, I was just passing out my of school, but I was traveling that time through that on a family vacation. Even I could sense uh, that sort of a thing. Now, uh, if that is really happening and if people have missed it till yesterday, uh, then I think a uh, 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 lot to be said about our political analysis. Now, having said that, you know, uh, I'm not getting into the uh, 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 you know uh, the moral part of it or uh, the, if somebody thinks a Modi and Amit Shah did not fig uh, figure out there would be a fatigue or they would not have figured out that opposition will try to get its act together uh, or they would get lulled by the fact of whatever the hodgepodge India alliance has happened. One year ago, there was every reason to believe Indian, uh, India alliance has come together and uh, get their, um, you know, um, sacked together. So they have anticipated various contingencies. And as Rashid is saying, why, whether the shopping spree, etc., these are all calculated risks. They are, as they say, Prime Minister himself has said, I could be, uh, you know, people can find fault with me on various things, but nobody will say I'm a bad politician. I understand politics. So they would have factored all these things, including uh, uh, their uh, dropping Vasundara uh, Rajas India now, or uh, uh, whether you call it sidelining Shivraj or any of that. All that has been factored in, and I'm not saying they're infallible. Uh, everybody makes mistakes, their mistakes can get wrong, and ultimately the best, uh, the best people win. Now, that, I think, still remains the situation, and they have tried to move the chess pieces, and we'll have to see. Now, a lot of these factors, we may say uh, uh, Hindutva doesn't matter, but what? how does it affect a common voter? Today, I can tell you, uh, BJP may not win any seats in Tamil Nadu, but if their vote percentage goes up, <coughs> One of the factors that their vote percentage is going to go up is because yes. of the uh, Ram Mandir and other factors. So it's a multiplicity of factors. And as has been analyzed by Nalin Mehta earlier, if you see BJP's campaigning, they've done it empirically through statistical analysis to show that they talk Hindutva, they talk about it, it is only in the pecking orders of seventh or eighth item in their list. Mm -hmm. What the message to drive home are these benefits are you know the larger image and that is what they do and that is what still makes mr modi the power uh, he is when you, you have seen priya in the last mm -hmm. time, there has been this surge of um, uh, these uh, media conclaves of your various competitive channels everywhere when mr yeah, modi now walks in the kind of uh, uh, welcoming us, and that's not, you know, just uh, sacrificing or people just doing it that way. You can palpably feel the energy in the audience mm. and speaks when he uh, moves out of that place, uh, yeah. the stuck feeling. And it is not those people because they're a captive audience. Okay, the front row, some of the media owners may make the right noises, etc. But the uh, 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 janta who is coming there, 
they are not yes. going to, they are not unintelligent people so that right. man has char charisma he has a lot going for him and everybody mm. say today amit shah's political communication has improved miles and uh, the, from the time when he entered into um, uh, parliamentary politics so have his ambitions uh, but uh, ashutosh uh, uh, again it's all about modi nahi uh, no disrespect to no disrespect to sandeep he's a he's a good dear friend but if conclaves could have won election the no incumbent government would have ever lost i'd see i'd see enough conclaves continue. across the, not, across I'm the world not, i'm not no. giving that as a point similarly yoga classes also don't determine you, uh, you I, know, agree. I agree okay. i agree with you. i agree with you sandeep classes. sandeep I, i i agree with you i agree <laughs> with you on that point let's not see uh, i think we we need we need a different grammar to understand ha uh, uh, and i'm saying 2014 has been a hindutva revolution what is revolution delinking from the past disruption of the present creation of the future as simple so modi can be can be can be compared with the lenin of the 2017 because a disruption has really happened there is a creation of the future there there is there is a hope that the that the future will be will be created within that parameter mm -hmm. it's not that the past will start resisting what is the past today the past is baba saab ambedkar's constitution forget about the constitution just remember baba saab ambedkar and baba saab ambedkar means the dalit yeah and there is a very strong ambedkarite movement is going on on the ground it might not resonate in delhi but if you go to the small towns you will feel and when there is a question about a constitution being changed there is a, some apprehension they they think that baba saab ambedkar is going to be insulted and baba saab is going to be humiliated again and that that feeling was there in in uh, in early 50s and that's why baba saab ambedkar has resigned then what i'm saying is that there is a disruption in indian politics today there absolutely no doubt about it there is a disruption in indian politics but sometimes when disruption happens the forces do fight back and this is the fight back moment whether they win or lose that's a different thing those forces were absolutely on defensive in 2014 those forces were absolutely on defensive in 2019 but those forces today are offensive and i i tell you why i have mm. written a book on the 2014 election i had written a book on the Nar on narendra modi from 2014 2019 i had never seen narendra modi indulging into so heavily on the hindutva issue when the congress manifesto comes he compares it to the muslim league when the the, the, the fish controversy erupts he said this ye ye mughal sultanat ki ki wo hai mm. he is saying do sahzade photo khichwa rahe hain shooting kara rahe hain fir kya kehte hain wo wo kehte hain ram ka ram ka ab ka apman kar rahe hain ye log sanatan virodhi hai ye log i had not heard prime minister narendra modi saying something like this before the first phase of election in 2019 nor in 2014 in 2014 in fact he barely touched on the hindutva one or twice once and twice he made such kind of statement in assam and bengal not here not in north and india because that, so 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 like I'll, i'll i'll come back sir i'll come, hmm. come back sir i think we uh, so my point is opposition might be in disarray i have a serious objections but sometimes the one of the problems of the revolution is that it promises is promises moon when moon is not delivered in the first phase they are excused they need more time second time also hmm. not, not not delivered then the problem is the the people starts getting affected and that's where the dissatisfaction starts roaming in i'm not saying the dissatisfaction has turned into a major undercurrent against the modi i'm only saying fatigue okay. so we have to understand that and mm. if and and the bjp is already beat they have to come down in terms of numbers so when they have to come down in the number they will find it difficult to maintain their lead to maintain, to get the uh, majority i'm only saying this okay Uh, I have only one question for him. Mm -hmm. Answer later. Whether he thinks the uh, assuming what he is saying is true, whether he thinks the public trusts Congress more to defend Ambedkar and uh, uh, protect that constitution than BJP or Modi, that is the question I will. Okay. Ask. So this leave this, it for later. Let me address you then. Huh? Only thirty seconds. Hmm. Ask this question in Tamil Nadu. Ask this question in Maharashtra. Ask this question with the Dalits. You will get the answer. See up. Uh, north india is not not india 
India itself. Not India. The, the, the India is not okay. Gujarat. India is not three okay. years continuously so, so, in Tamil Nadu. I lived okay. in Tamil Nadu for three years hmm. till now. I travel in Maharashtra, and I don't. Uh, my comments are that not based on Delhi and uh, uh, okay. uh, you know not. So maybe not Congress, but some other opposition party. You know whether it's DMK over there and um, uh, the Maharashtra Chandra. Regional Alliance. See the so, Congress. Uh, Congress lost because Congress promised moon. Uh, during during the freedom freedom moment, when the moon was not delivered, they were rejected. So Congress has to reinvent itself, and they are in the process of reinventing to assume that the Congress will come into the power in 2024, 2029. No, no, I'm not a I'm not a fool. I know I know it will take time. Okay, but at least the hold is receding. Is what uh, the BJP is hold is receding. Uh, Rashid, you wanted to come in? Yeah, I think Priya, it's very simple. As no, uh, had said, Zinda for me five years in the interval does not See, to have another five years for Mr. Modi, which will, have, which will have a very telling effect on the Congress and the entire opposition. Uh, my friend Ashutosh was talking because he is a, basically a theoretician and he talks a lot in theory, which sounds very good. But on the practical scale, there are a lot of challenges are there. You look at Dalit voters in India, assuming that Dalits are disturbed, uh, assuming that, you know, they have a sort of sense of belonging with uh, uh, Mr. Yes. Uh, you know, Ambedkar's constitution and it's being violated. What is happening on the ground? See it very minutely. See, this is Mayavati. I keep saying Mayavati is the biggest insurance policy the BGP has in UP and even sometimes beyond UP. So there is a Dalit icon. She's there. You look at Paswan's family. Both branches of Paswan's family, they are sort of, you know, fight Chacha Matija, but they are both are part of uh, NDA. Prakash Ambedkar is playing havoc in Maharashtra. You see, he is he may be a very small mm -hmm. political party, but he is there because I know Sushil Kumar Shinde's daughter is contesting. Yes. Several others, and they are very much mm -hmm. upset with Prakash Ambedkar. So this is the thing. So BJP, Modi, they do very smart thing by bringing everyone together. See, okay. there are two national parties who are presidents are you know Dalits, uh, BSP and Congress. In Congress case, a proposal was made by Mamta Banerjee and Kejriwal to declare Kharge as presidential candidate. The Congress was absolutely silent. How do Dalits relate to opposition or Congress and not go for the other side? That is okay. my question. Okay. Uh, we are out uh, of Priya, time Priya, to Priya, one. Minor, minor interjection. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, I theory, want to say like, I have to say theory, 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 theory creates revolutions. That's what the Marx yes. did. I have to say. Okay. Come, Quick come. I have, I have to say two lines. What so, are they, uh, yeah, just two lines. I don't want to get into too much details. But we had this exact same conversation and one of the naysayers made this exact same arguments that Rashid Bhai was making. Exactly the same. It's actually a deja vu movement. And another person who was sitting with me says, Sif hangama khada karna mera maksad nahi. Sari koshish hai ki ye surat badalni chahiye. Mere sine mein nahi to tere sine mein hi sahi. Ho kahi par bhi aag lekin ye aag jalni chahiye. This thing what Ashutosh is saying, ye aag jalni chahiye. Ye Prakash Ambedkar ji, Paswan ji, Mayawati ji. Ye sare cheez hai. Public is angry. और जब इनका इनका जब कहर चलता है इनका जब क्रोध चलता है बड़े बड़े लोग इसके सामने नतमस्तक हो जाते हैं इस चीज को आप याद रखना फायर एक्सटिंग ऑन दैट नोट थैंक यू ऑल फॉर दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन एंड आई एम श्योर वील हैव मेनी मोर इट्स विद लॉन्ग इलेक्शन एंड यूर फॉलोइंग इट वेरी क्लोजली बट फॉर नाउ दैट्स ऑल थैंक यू For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.